What message are you bringing from Washington back to President Zelensky? So first of all, we have great and amazing uh, meeting with President Biden, with all uh, United States officials. We have great meetings with international financial organizations and with ministers of finances of many countries, J20 uh, countries. And uh, the main message is that civilized world is absolutely greatly support Ukraine in this situation when Russia begin this uh, full-scale war against Ukraine. So this is the main message with, with, which I have after meetings here. And the United States especially support us in all the spheres, in uh, military sphere, in financial sphere, and in humanitarian sphere, because we now have huge challenges in our country because of this war with Russia. There have been a number of world leaders, the UK, from Austria, other countries who've come to Ukraine to see for themselves what's happening. Is it important to you to have a US official come to Ukraine? It's very important political symbol and a symbol of uh, uniting of the countries and politicians and nations when uh, our partners go to Ukraine to see by their own eyes what's happened. Uh, which atrocities and war crimes Russian army and Russian Federation uh, made in Ukraine during this uh, 58 days of this bloody war in Ukraine. So it's important signal and issue for our nation when our partners are presented in Ukraine. Do you have reassurances from the U.S. that the Americans will reopen the embassy in Ukraine soon? We are waiting this. We hope that it will happen nearest time. Did they give you any dates or promises or just hopefully when it's safe? No, a decision will be made and we will wait this uh, when it will happen. Uh, when we look at what's happening in Mariupol, how should Americans understand what happens once Russia has control of that city? Mariupol now is surrounded by Russian's army. Part of Mariupol is occupied by Russians, but another one part where is located Azovstal, big enterprise, 25% of city area. So uh, some thousand of our soldiers, some thousands of civilians together with them, uh, it's mostly women and children are hiding in the basements of these enterprises. Uh, soldiers are protecting these civilians, but uh, quantity of Russian soldiers, quantity of Russian techniques is times, times more than our soldiers. But now we have heard that Russians begin to bomb, bombing this, bombarding this uh, enterprise, this uh, shelters where our soldiers and civilians are saving from their bombs. And we ask Russians, we ask all of our partners to stop them and to create green corridor and to let these people go out of there to save their lives because it's very important because there in Mariupol we know the facts when small children babies were died because of dehydration uh, during this uh, 58 days of war so there are terrible atrocities terrible war crimes on the Mariupol territory and when we will liberate this we will open to the world huge uh, quantity of this military crimes and these atrocities which Russian army is uh, uh, making there right now and how we see this in Bucha, in Irpin, in Hostomel, in other cities in Kiev, uh, Chernihiv and Suma regions. So the same they are doing in Mariupol. There have been satellite images of mass graves around the city. Absolutely. Um, your government has said Mariupol might be a red line. And because of the atrocities, diplomacy may not be possible. Are we at that point? Has that line been crossed? I think that Bucha was one of the game changer for the civilized world, for our society. But Mariupol is like symbol of uh, brave Ukrainian soldiers and civilians who two months protect their city from Russian invasion, from Russian atrocities. 
So this is like symbol for the world, and I think that it will be red line for the all civilized world, not only for Ukrainian society, for Ukrainian government, for Ukrainian people. So we will protect our country, we will protect our cities, and Mariupol will stay till the end because of our soldiers say that we will stay here and protect our city till the end. I heard you say that it might be the worst catastrophe of the century. So do you believe after doing something like that, that Russia can negotiate in good faith? Russia done many atrocities and many war crimes in Ukraine. But we understand that this terrible war could be finished only uh, on the table of negotiations. With presence of, uh, presence of our partners, of uh, world leaders, of uh, civilized countries, but we should sign uh, some papers about finish of this war. So in any way, but now we are in our society, in our army, guys and girls uh, are so brave and they are prepared to protect our country as long as it, as it will need it. And we feel support of United States, of President Biden personally, of all officials from United States, from European Union, from all other countries, from Canada, for example, mm -hmm. and we will fight and all civilized world support us and we feel this and it encourage us, encourage our army, our soldiers, our people. If you know more than 200 peoples, men and women, were coming back to Ukraine in the first days of the war to stay and to protect our country. They come from all around the world, from all, all countries where they live, work. So our people from all around the world are prepared to protect our country and we are so much encouraged and so much, uh, so much brave Ukrainian peoples are uh, that we will fight till the end, till the win, till the glory. So. It's very important for us. President Biden says he will go to Congress next week and ask for more money to provide weapons to Ukraine. The last time that happened, it took three weeks for Congress to sign off on funds. Do you have three weeks to wait? When the war is gone, so we count every minute, every hour, not every day, not every week or month, because every minute, and every hour, soldiers, civilians, children, women are dying. Mm -hmm. Because of this, we need faster decisions. But United States, European Union, civilized world make many faster decisions. And we're so much grateful for this. We need more support. I told on all of the, our meetings that we need four issues. First one, it's ammunition and weapon for our country to have possibility to protect ourselves to make this weapon to our army and to stop Russians, uh, invite Ukraine and go next countries, democratic countries and democratic world. The second issue is sanctions because it's influence uh, right on the uh, budget of Russia, which is financing terrorism and genocide against of Ukrainians. The third, the third issue is financial support because we would like to save macroeconomical stability of our country because we understand that when war will finish, we will, uh, we will recover our country in very fast way if we will save now macroeconomical st stability and economical stability, stability of our businesses, our uh, uh, social and humanitarian obligations. And uh, fourth issue is our European perspectives because Ukraine understand mm -hmm. and all of our people understand that our future is in the civilized world, in the United Europe, but not in the former Soviet Union or Russian Empire. So it's our civilized choice of our society. But we know the next few weeks are critical. Uh, a group of lawmakers has talked about setting up field hospitals on the border of Ukraine, setting medical supplies. Is that the kind of immediate help you need? The big battle for Donbass, as Russians name it, begins five days ago. We see it because of quantity of casualties from both sides. And Russians are pressuring dramatically on our uh, army, but our soldiers are staying on their positions, protecting, and we will do it. We have support 
from our partners in military sphere, in financial sphere. So this is crucially important for us and we will have this nearest time and we will have this now. So we are grateful to our partners and especially United States for this. But specifically, is it medical supplies you need most? Is it heavy weapons? Is it just cash? You mean for the army, for the soldiers? Yes. So first of all, we need weapon. The second issue is medical support, but many countries support us in this medical sphere because they uh, take our uh, injured soldiers and uh, make for them rehabilitation, medicine, so everything is uh, under uh, support of our partners. Uh, the cash, uh, in sense of uh, our budget, is very important for social and humanitarian responsibilities of our state uh, to our people, to our citizens, mostly for civil persons. And that's four to five billion dollars a month. Ukraine yes. needs. Yes, because Did you get pledges for that here in Washington? Yes, we have many negotiations with uh, J20 countries, the ministers of finances of these countries, with uh, international financial organizations, IMF, World Bank. So all of them approve this amount and all of them are understand that we need uh, humanitarian support for internally displaced persons. We have 7 million internally displaced persons. We have more than 10 million persons which are suffering on the front line or on the territories near of this front line. They also suffering on the occupied territories. So we as government, we as country should support all of these people and bring them food, water, medicines. So it also costs. For example, in March, we spent $1.1 billion only for these 7 million of internally displaced persons. But now, after liberation of some territories of Ukraine, we need also support by finances, by technologies for mine cleaning activity because more than 120,000 square miles are under mining and uh, bombs. So we should uh, spend money and time to clean this territory and to let people uh, to go back to their houses because their houses also are mined and some of the families going back to their house opening this wash, wash machine or freezers and there is uh, it, it, this all is mined uh, garages basements everything is mined by russians and many people civilians people are, are dying now on the liberated territories because of this uh, mining of their houses and there's mining, I understand, in the Black Sea, closing off those ports so that Ukraine can't sell its commodities, can't sell its grains and move those shipments out. The biggest uh, challenge for the civilized world is future food crisis, which Russia creates right now, blocking seaports of Ukraine. Because mm -hmm. uh, traditionally, Ukraine is one of the biggest supplier of wheat, corn and other uh, food products for African, Asian and some European countries. More than 90 million ton, tons of food production Ukraine supplied through the sea ports. Now Russia, first in our history, in history of uh, last centuries, block the seaports of another country and don't let us to export our production. Uh, it's impossible to make uh, by the railroads or through the rivers, uh, it's possible to do only through the sea, sea port. So we ask our partners to open this green or blue corridor for, for not to allow to Russians to make this food crisis in the world. The UN Secretary General says he's flying to Moscow next week to meet with Vladimir Putin. Do you think this is any kind of diplomatic breakthrough? I'm not sure. So many leaders of countries of uh, civilized world, international organization try to have this negotiation, but uh, the, I think that Russian Federation and uh, Putin are not interested in this negotiation. They are interested in other things. They are interested in genocide of Ukrainians. They are interested in creation of migration crisis in Europe and in the world. They are interested in creation of food crisis energy crises, so they do just this. I'm not sure or they're capable to mm -hmm. hold these negotiations in proper way. 
Will President Zelensky meet with the UN Secretary General? Uh, we have meeting, uh, I think that two weeks ago with Deputy of Secretary General. But if Secretary General will visit Ukraine, Kyiv, absolutely President Zelensky will meet him. Well, I ask because your defense minister wrote a very sharp editorial um, in the Wall Street Journal, and he said Russia has done everything that the international security institutions were created to prevent. He said the United Nations has failed the people of Ukraine. Do you agree the international system has failed? First day of the war, uh, it was very hard time because uh, we fight against uh, Russian army. So we go through the first day thanks to our army, our brave people, and uh, we ask for support from international organizations. I personally call to International Atomic uh, Agency, Atomic Energy Agency, to the uh, International Red Cross. We begin to meeting with uh, these organizations on the 10th, uh, 20th, 30th uh, days of the war. Uh, now we have this support, but first days were, were very hard for our country, for our people. But in any way, our people are brave and we will win in this war. So they were slow to act, the international institutions? First day, days was, uh, first days were uh, very hard for us. Here in Washington, you met with some of those international organizations that were set up to prevent wars like this, the IMF, the World Bank, other agencies. Is that working? European Union and international financial organization made fastest reaction, fantastically fast reaction. On the first days, the European Union took decision to uh, give Ukraine a micro-financial support. It was immediate uh, reaction. United States immediately react and bring us uh, finances, money for support us and begin supply uh, needed weapon uh, from the first days. So interna many international organizations uh, reacting in a very fast way. Uh, some of them a little bit slower, but now all the civilized world, all the international organizations support Ukraine. Uh, United Nations are acting in Ukraine, supporting our internally displaced persons, mm -hmm. su uh, supporting our refugees in European Union and other countries. Now we try to coordinate our cooperation with these international organizations to find the most suffering categories of our people and to support them in the first priority. Do you, here in Washington, did you receive promises of more military training for Ukrainian soldiers? We have support from our partners. Uh, for military training right now. So we are training, we change standards, we uh, study new technologies for our soldiers and our army. So everything is on its way. Everything's on its way. Absolutely. Do you think the decision by President Biden and NATO um, to say they will not send troops to Ukraine in open the door to more brutality by Vladimir Putin, that he felt he could get away with it? I think that brutality of Russian Federation and Putin uh, begins from the 2008-2014s when they take the Crimea, when they, when they occupied uh, Donbass. So uh, from this time, Ukraine asked our partners to make strong sanctions. Uh, don't give Russia to increase their uh, military capacity. Mm -hmm. uh, now. I think all the partners understand that uh, some mistakes were done uh, during these uh, last years when Russia uh, dramatically increased uh, their capacities in military sphere. Mm -hmm. But now all of our partners understand that sanctions should be, it should be very effective, don't let Russian to increase their budget, budget finance military expenses, right. f expenses finance terrorism against Ukraine and maybe against uh, of the other countries. Uh, actually, creation of this food crisis, uh, in the energy crises, migrant crises, this is hybrid aggression against of civilized world. So it is right now. But by saying the U.S. will not send troops, period, does that open the door? 
for Vladimir Putin to continue to escalate because he doesn't fear it. One of the president's own allies has asked that question. I think that Ukrainian army is professional and brave enough uh, to protect our country and even protect European borders. Uh, we always ask, give us the instruments and we will finish the job. So this is very important for us. And this was very important last years uh, to uh, give us all needed instruments and mm -hmm. we will do our job by ourselves. You're being very diplomatic. Do you believe the U.S. wants Ukraine to fight to a stalemate or to actually defeat Vladimir Putin, to actually win? I personally think that it's impossible to win the war uh, with, uh, in, in the battle with one of the biggest nuclear firepower is in Russia. So we may protect our democracy, our land, our families. Uh, we may protect democracy in Europe, in, on the, our continent, in the world. But I think that this war should be finished uh, when we... Uh, clean our territories from uh, Russian occupants. A full withdrawal is the only way to end the war? Sorry? Are you saying that a full withdrawal of Russian troops is the only way to end the war? I think yes. If uh, Russians will leave territory of Ukraine, if we will uh, have uh, guarantees of safety for our country from our partners, if we will have possibility to recover our country and uh, using uh, Russians' frozen uh, assets. So I think that we can think that the war is finished and that Ukraine uh, have a glory in this war. What are those security guarantees that you need from the United States or from other Western powers in, in order for your government to sit down and strike a deal with Russia? How do you agree to a treaty of neutrality without so, certain guarantees? Now, actually, we are on our negotiations with partners. It's, it's not so simple negotiations. So all the details now on, 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 on discussion because of this, I can't now clearly say that this or this uh, security guarantees are very needed or uh, required for uh, stop and finish of this war. So we will negotiate with our partners and find uh, proper and correct format for uh, such a secu security uh, guarantees. You talked about seized Russian assets. There's a proposal in Congress to seize some of those frozen Russian accounts and use them to repay damage, to pay for damage in Ukraine. Did you get guarantees from the U.S. that they're looking at doing that? We have these negotiations with the United States, with all of our partners, and uh, this should be a very good case for future possible aggressors. They all should understand that world society, world community will take all of their assets and will pay by these assets for this country which is suffering because of their aggression. So this is very important international issue and task and goal, international goal, for all civilized world uh, to find solution how to take these frozen uh, assets and uh, finance recovery of uh, Ukraine in this case. And for future, it should be like standard. If some country will uh, make aggression against another democratic countries, it should pay for this absolutely for everything. So the $600 billion you said it will take to rebuild Ukraine, you think that can come from the yachts of oligarchs and bank accounts that the U.S. Froze. Absolutely, as a minimum. For now, we count all of these um, uh, damages, which uh, and, and destroying infrastructure, destroying uh, residential uh, building houses of the people, or the energy infrastructure, uh, enterprises infrastructure, uh, losing of the GDP for our country for many years because they destroy part of our economy. So all of this should be paid by Russia, absolutely. Right. Mr. Prime Minister, thank you for your time today. Thank you so much.